Hey everyone, today uh, our video is going to be on the Samsung 4-door French door refrigerator with Smart Home Hub and why this refrigerator is worth all the money uh, that Samsung uh, charges for it. So, um, just a little background, I'm remodeling my kitchen and um, when I pulled my old refrigerator out, which I was perfectly happy with, um, I found a big rust hole in the back and water leaking out of it. <clears throat> And it turns out it has some kind of design defect on it where the refrigerant line was too close to the uh, panel in the back and it would create condensation and, and rot the refrigerator. So that refrigerator was made by Electrolux and um, I needed to get a new refrigerator. So I started my hunt, went around looking for refrigerators and I was hoping to spend around $1,500 thinking that would be a nice good refrigerator uh, for that kind of money. And, uh, you know, I did find out that a lot of refrigerators are branded with all kinds of names, but they're actually only made by a few companies anymore. So, for instance, Frigidaires are actually still made by Electrolux, because Electrolux bought Frigidaire, so there's no Frigidaire actual manufacturer anymore. They're all Electrolux. And so, you kind of have to know what you're buying uh, before you buy a refrigerator. So, I did eventually uh, go to Sears and buy um, a Kenmore Elite, which is actually made by LG. So it was an LG refrigerator. It was, one of the, it was a side-by-side -side with one of those Insta doors in it, which is sort of that uh, door that's inset inside the main door where you can open up and just grab quick items. And so I thought it was, it was a perfect balance. It was around the price point I wanted. And so I got it delivered. And after setting it up and plugging it in, uh, the first thing I noticed was it had this just incredibly annoying high frequency buzzing sound that never stopped. It's, I can't describe it except it was like a, a bee buzzing in your ear right next to you all the time. And it never stopped. And it had this vibration on it that would just sort of vibrate little things around the fridge like the shelves on the inside, the ice maker paddle and different things. And it was just super annoying and you know I found out that all new refrigerators are pretty much made with linear compressors now so unlike the refrigerators we had for decades where the compressor just sort of cycles on and off based on the thermostat these new ones have these compressors that pretty much run almost all the time and they just sort of ramp up and down the pressure and cycle that so it's supposedly more energy efficient and keeps the refrigerator temperature more constant on the inside. What I did find out is that all linear compressors are not created equal and you do get what you pay for. So <clears throat> after a couple weeks of that having that refrigerator make that noise I couldn't take it anymore and I had to return it because it was just driving me insane. And it's not like it was like super super loud it's just that it had this high frequency buzz that never stopped, but you could hear it throughout the house. Um, so I had to get rid of it. And so I went online to find um, different refrigerator reviews. And, you know, a lot of them had that same kind of like complaint about the noises. So I saw this refrigerator originally when I was looking for refrigerators. I bypassed it because of the price. Um, because um, it was like four thousand dollars retail price and um, I thought it was just sort of uh, just a gimmick because of the smart home hub and that's really what was uh, so highly priced but it turns out that you do get what you pay for and the quality does make a difference and so we're gonna go over the features of this refrigerator and I'm gonna tell you why this one is worth the cost now Luckily, when I returned the other refrigerator, this one went on sale. Lowe's had a 25% off sale, for so I actually got it for like $2,900 around there, which was a significant savings over the normal price tag. So if you can get it on sale, obviously that's the better choice. Um, but uh, there are, there's a bunch of main things on this refrigerator which make it worth its price point. So, so we're going to start the review on that. And then I'll compare it to the LG that I bought and why I didn't like the LG compared to this one. Okay, so let's start with the, the exterior and the main feature. So first of all, when I plugged the refrigerator in, um, the first thing I noticed is I could not hear it running. 
And at first I thought it was not even working until I opened it up, the lights were on on the inside, the panel lighted up. Uh, so I let it uh, cool down for an hour and then I opened it up and it was cold inside. So it was working. This refrigerator is silent. I mean, I don't know how to describe it. I cannot hear this refrigerator running at all. I had to put my ear up against the cabinet on the side of it to actually hear the refrigerator. So, and this has a linear compressor also, because uh, Samson has a big sticker on the front when you first buy it, 10 year linear compressor warranty. So, they are not created equal, and you do get what you pay for, so there's different quality levels of these linear compressors. Also, you know, it could be the amount of sound insulation, the way they mount the compressor, and that's those types of things that make a difference on whether you hear it or not. But this refrigerator is virtually silent. So if noises bother you, this is the one that you want to get. And I was so happy after I plugged it in and I couldn't hear anything at all. And I mean nothing. You don't hear it at all running. Uh, there's no vibrations, nothing. Okay, so that's the first thing. So right there, that sells me right there, and I didn't have to even go any further. But the other thing about this refrigerator, you can see it's a stainless steel. It has this special finish on it to resist fingerprints, which a lot of them have. The LG did not. So the LG, you touched it, and there were fingerprints on it, and you couldn't get them off. Um, I tried just wiping them off with a cloth and damp cloth. It would just make it worse, and it looked terrible. This has a resistant finish on it that if you touch it first of all you don't really get fingerprints on it but even if you have some greasy fingerprints and you get it on it you can take just a damp cloth wipe right over it it comes right off it's like it almost has like a clear coat on it or something that um, pr protects the finish from fingerprints so that's fantastic because you know fingerprints make stainless steel look really bad after a while and usually Whatever cleaners you use, it just smears it and, then, and you can never get a, that smooth, perfect finish again. So that's the second thing that is uh, fantastic about this refrigerator. Um, the third is the design of it. Um, it's a French door and it has, it's a four-door French door, so we'll talk about what that middle drawer does and why that's uh, a big advantage. And then, of course, it has the smart home hub in it which, you know, originally I thought, well, this is sort of gimmicky and stuff like that. Actually, it's not. It's one of the most useful things um, I've ever had in the kitchen. And because you come down every day in the morning, the first place you hit is the kitchen, it's perfect. And it gives you your everything about your day that's going to be happening that day right on, your, on the refrigerator. So we'll talk about that and how that, all that stuff works on the smart home piece. But before we get to the smart home piece, let's just talk about um, the main refrigerator features itself just the refrigerator and also the quality of the refrigerator so first thing I notice is that when they brought it in when I tried to move it around myself it's super heavy it's like twice the weight of the LG was um, and you can tell like the side of the cabinets the back and everything it's a thicker metal it doesn't flex when you push on it um, even the back where they have the lower grate at the bottom where you, you know, you clean out, you can take it off to clean out the coils and stuff like that. It's a thick, solid metal. It doesn't rattle, move around, bend, and that kind of stuff. The second thing I like about their design is the way they hook up the ice maker line in the back. Most refrigerators have a valve that sort of sticks out the back in the lower left corner and then you attach the line and usually it's at an angle so that you can't really push your refrigerator all the way back you have to leave like five inches plus that'll make your refrigerator stick out from the wall so that is the other thing they use just a flexible plastic water line coming out the back uh, that you just attach your line to so whether it's another flexible line or it's a copper line whatever it may be you don't have to worry about where it's coming out of the floor or out of the wall because this flexible line will attach anywhere and you can push it right up against the wall then. So really cool design. It's the only one I saw that has that. All the other ones had the valve that actually sticks out the back of the refrigerator. Um, the other thing is they paint the side of the refrigerator the same sort of color as the stainless steel front so it has like a nice gray side. So if you have a little bit sticking out the side of your cabinets, you don't notice it as opposed to being black or white. So that was kind of nice. And um, 
the obviously the quality of the compressor itself because it's silent makes a big difference so let's talk about the refrigerator as far as like what features you get on it so you can see here you have a standard um, ice dispenser right here and so you have the uh, now this is chilled water, so that's kind of nice because my old one just had water coming out of the tap and it would be at the temperature of the actual um, line of the water coming into the house. This is chilled um, and then you can do of course cubed and crushed ice. So you just switch them by tapping the different um, choices right there. So pretty standard as far as that goes. Um, and then you have of course the smart home hub which we'll talk about later on the right hand side. But let's talk about the inside of the refrigerator first, just its main features. Okay, so it's a French door, obviously, so the top part here is the refrigerator section. If we open up this part here, this is the um, ice maker dispenser right here. So this takes up a section of the space here, but they do have still three shelves on this side, and you can even fit smaller stuff right here on this shelf, which is kind of nice right around the ice maker. These are not adjustable on this side because they have to be, you know, go around the ice maker perfectly. But you still have some shelving there. Okay. On this side, on the other side, you have three adjustable shelves and they have five different positions. So you can adjust those for whatever you need. In the main part of the fridge here, you've got two crispers on the bottom here and you can uh, set the humidity controls for each one of those. And then you have two sets of shelves in the middle here. Okay, so uh, these are adjustable. You can see in the back the holes to adjust them up and down wherever you want them. Okay, and they are metal shelves uh, with glass. And this shelf over here has a little feature on it, which is you just go like that and push it back. And then you have this sort of space here. You can put tall limes if you need to. So this is adjustable right here. And then at the top here, you can see there's also this shelf that flips up and down. So if you have to have a tall item like this, you can have it in there, or you can push this down here, click it in, and then you have uh, the full shelf at the top there. So whichever way you want it, you can do it. It has all this adjustment to it. The ice maker is built in on the left-hand side here, so this comes off, and you can see the uh, ice bucket in there with the ice. And then you can see back here, uh, they have the LED lighting, which makes it really bright on the inside, so no more bulbs to change. And then this is metal cooling, so this is not a gimmick. This actually works really well. So they have this huge metal plate going down the back of the refrigerator, and what that does is keep a constant temperature on the inside of the refrigerator. So that constant temperature, because that metal plate is, is stays cool, cold all the time. So it's an extra feature, but it does work. And then we have this little, um, this is the filter for the uh, water. So this just, uh, you twist it left and it comes out and you can change your water filter right here. So that's pretty much the inside of the main part of the refrigerator. Pretty standard, but it has some uh, nice little storage and shelving features. And the doors close nice and easy too. You don't have to like slam them or anything. Um, they'll just close by themselves. So that's really nice. I don't know if you noticed uh, the little sound that was beeping there a second ago, but that's the uh, leaving the door open warning. So they have a little alarm that lets you know if you left the door open if it didn't close all the way too. And we'll talk about that and how that works. So down at the bottom here is where we have the uh, freezer. So when you open the freezer here, um, it has two levels inside the freezer. So that's actually pretty nice. It has this upper shelf right here. And then down below, it has the main part of the freezer. And it's got a lot of storage space, actually. So it's pretty good. But the um, nice thing about it is you can take out this middle uh, divider if you don't want it. And then also this top shelf right here, basically, when you close it, will automatically slide back and then when you pull it open if you want to you can pull it forward right and it has sort of a lock right there a pretty standard freezer it's all lit but the real nice feature about this refrigerator is this center drawer right here which is called the flex drawer or the flex zone so what this is this is a separate refrigerator zone that you can have a different temperature than the temperature in the upper part of your refrigerator 
And so what this lets you do is either keep drinks or different things at a different temperature because maybe the main refrigerator temperature is either too warm or too cold. So I keep a lot of stuff like yogurt here and this is really nice because prior to this when I kept the yogurt in the regular part of the refrigerator after a while it would sort of like separate on the inside and the 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 water would separate sort of from the main yogurt and you'd have like sort of this layer of like um, liquid on top of the yogurt but now because I have it in this flex drawer and it's set to a certain temperature they stay solid and they're nice and super chilled and cold when I um, open them up so it's worth it and I'll show you how to set that but it also has this feature right here which is this little lock which you can change and then move this around left and right to uh, move your dividers and then you just lock it where you want it so that's pretty nice too where you can sort of organize anything that's in this uh, flex zone and this is also great for just quick stuff too so this is a really nice feature that you know I didn't really think about but once I had it and I started using it really nice and everything closes really nice you don't have to uh, slam it or anything like that it sort of like closes by itself once you push it so far in so that's pretty nice so overall the refrigerator itself as far as its functioning I really like the layout of it now this one is a counter depth refrigerator which you know means that you can see uh, it's it's not as deep as a standard refrigerator and that's just to make it look more custom inside my cabinetry here because it it's comes out 24 inches standard cabinet depth and so with a cabinet depth refrigerator obviously you don't get as much storage space interior wise because you're losing half the depth of the refrigerator but that's okay for me because I don't I don't need all that storage space but they make this same refrigerator in a standard depth also okay so those are the main refrigerator features so what we're going to go now over is the smart home hub which um, we're going to describe what it is what you can do with it and uh, why it's worth all the money uh, to have this uh, extra feature on your uh, refrigerator all right so let's talk about the smart hub so this is the uh, hub that will contain all the information for your day which is the best part about this so at first I thought this was kind of a gimmick but it's actually not and um, now that I've been using it I don't think I'd want to live without it because it just gives me everything I need to do and the best part is that it syncs up with all your devices uh, to keep everything between the fridge and your device in sync <clears throat> so it's a huge LCD screen on the refrigerator as you can see there's a big speaker on the bottom here has really good sound actually um, and it actually has an equalizer that's uh, related to that that you can set different equalizer settings um, it has a couple of sensors on it to uh, know when you're approaching the fridge and also has a microphone uh, so that you can talk to the voice assistant that's built in but this is the screen saver uh, screen so this pops on after so many seconds um, of inactivity and you can see this one is actually linked to the weather so what it does here you can see I'm in the fall season here where I am so it's got a tree here with the leaves turning and kind of floating around in the wind because of the weather today and I'm not sure if you can see it <clears throat> just FYI the screen flickering and and everything else that you and hard to see some of the lettering that's just because of the camera here trying to you know photograph an LCD screen it has nothing to do with the fridge so the pictures perfect it looks exactly like your computer monitor or, or a TV screen so but um, it has the time in the middle here it has the uh, sort of the date <clears throat> temperature location at the top here it's got any memos that you have at the bottom and then there's a little notification bell over on the left, right here that will give you sort of any notifications that are happening within the system like you left the fridge door open or you know different types of things okay so that's the that screen and this screen will change based on the weather so if it was raining today I'd see raindrops falling down and, and different things so it's just a screen saver uh, when there's inactivity but to actually go to the main page you just tap on the <clears throat> screen and then you'll be at the main page here now this is again hard to see with the camera but 
what we've got here is uh, my calendar on the right here. I've got the weather right here, shopping list. This is my to-do list at the bottom here, and then the memo section. So this whole screen is customizable to whatever you want. So these different widgets, you can add or subtract, take them on or off. You can rearrange them. And you have multiple screens here. So you can have um, as many of these screens as you need to, depending how many widgets you're putting on your system. You can add more screens. <clears throat> so right now, if you look, I've got three dots up here. So that means I have three screens. But I could actually add a fourth one if I wanted to. And the way you do all this stuff on any of these screens is you just hold your finger down on the screen and then it sort of goes into edit mode where you can see I can just push this over. It has a big plus sign right here where I can add another screen. So now I got a new screen. You notice I have four dots at the top here. And I can add anything I want. So if I just again hold my finger, I can go down to the bottom here where it has widgets and then pick different widgets to put on the screen depending what I want to put on there. So if I had a ring doorbell, I could put that on there. Um, there's, you know, Spotify, all these different widgets. You can also, uh, if you notice when you're picking your widgets, like here's one for the picture gallery. There's four different choices on this particular choice. So you can pick your format and kind of the size that you want for that widget on this screen. And then <clears throat> once you click it, it'll add it. And then, of course, you can go into the actual widget itself and then do whatever you want here, like, you know, pick different pictures that you want to see inside your uh, screen here. So different, you know, places or whatever it may be. And you can, like, you know, just pick whatever you want, all right? So you have your different choices there, and that's your widget. And same thing, if you want to get rid of your widget, you can just hold down your finger. There's a delete trash can. It'll get rid of it, whatever it is, and it'll be gone. Okay, so whether it's the screen itself or the widget itself, you can adjust and move these all around as needed. All these widgets, when you go into them, like the weather here, like suppose I want to get a little more information of the weather, I could hit this button right here, and then it would give me actually some more detailed information on the actual weather itself. Temperature, uh, you know, what it feels like outside, the highs and the lows. You have hourly, daily. You can do more, which gives you things like humidity and wind and things like that. You can also set different locations. So if you have multiple locations you want to keep track of, you can keep track of those in there also. You can uh, uh, delete those anytime you want to. So, And every screen pretty much has this back button, which takes you back to where you were before. Um, so this goes out to the weather channel and, and gets all that information. And the calendar right here, which is one of the best features, now I don't have to have a paper calendar on the wall anymore and write stuff down. I have my calendar right here. And so for each day, like you see Monday, if I hit that, you can see this is Veterans Day, so it's a holiday. And also my countertops are being installed on Monday. So every morning when I come down, it, it really just tells me this is what's happening today. And any appointments I had, all that kind of stuff can be on your calendar. Again, if you touch any of these widgets and you go into the calendar itself, then you have all the different things you can do, like add events. So I can click that, add event. I can put a new event on, the dates and times, location, any notes. I can invite different people. I can put an alert on it if I want to, to alert myself. It can be a repeating event. So whatever you want to do in here, um, you can add to your calendar. There's some settings for the calendars, like um, if you want to add, this is my Google calendar, but if you want to add an Outlook calendar, put your contacts in there, all this kind of stuff you can have added to the calendar. Pick your start day of the week, so all the kinds of different settings to set up your calendar. <clears throat> um, same thing with the shopping list here. So on the shopping list, you can see I've got a couple of things listed here. Things that are have the line through them means I already have them, but things that don't mean I need them, right? So you can see these are, there's no um, solid square here. It's open, which means it would be on my shopping list, right? If I want to add something to my shopping list, I can click the plus sign. You know, I can add a new food item at the top here. There's different ways I can use the keyboard. I can actually use the voice control, um, or I can actually just write it. So depending what I want. So if, just say I were, wrote cereal, 
at the bottom here then it actually just puts it up the top here cereal and if I hit done it adds cereal to my uh, shopping list it actually has a little icon for it for all the different types of foods and that's it now if I went back I would see it on my shopping list now there's cereal okay that's one way you can do it and pretty much all these screens work the same whether it's a shopping list memos or whatever it may be but there's also the voice here and if I hit that I can just say it and then it will add whatever I want to my uh, list so I'm gonna hit this milk so there it added it at the top there I'm gonna say done and there's milk on my shopping list so you actually don't even have to type anything in or write anything if you don't want to you can just say it and it'll put it in there for you and then if I go back now it's on my list here so if I go back to my home screen you can see there's my list now what's important about this is these this is all linked to your phone so now if I go to my phone do you see on my phone those things I just added there milk and cereal they're now on my shopping list and ice cream right so anything that is crossed out is grayed out on my shopping list so if I'm in the store and I forget what I put on my list here I can just pull out my phone and it syncs it right up immediately it's the same thing if you're on your phone and you want to get rid of something so I'm gonna just uh, check off cereal here sorry about that it's got two hands okay and if you look on the screen right here it just immediately updated and crossed out cereal because now it's I have it on my uh, phone that I I've gotten it so I don't need it anymore so there's immediate uh, syncing between the uh, phone and your uh, refrigerator and so you can add things here directly or you can add them on your phone directly it doesn't matter what device you do it on they sync up together so they're the same the other nice thing about uh, on the phone here is you can also and sorry my camera is like moving around here there's an inside fridge uh, thing here where you can actually see inside the refrigerator there's cameras inside the refrigerator so if you are at the grocery store and you forgot if you have something or you don't or you're running low you can actually just hit the cameras on the fridge and then see if you have it in, in the fridge so and that's something you can do right when you're in the store and you don't have to run home and then find out you forgot something down here on the uh, to-do list it's the same type of thing <clears throat> for and you can have multiple to-do lists for different people so whoever's in your household and you can add things to your to-do list delete them off the list and same same process down below here uh, when you're adding an item um, oops All right when we're gonna add an item right here you have the same <coughs> bottom here where you can type it in you can say it or you can write it either of the three and then it'll just add it to your list as to do's and add it to your phone your or your tablet wherever you have the uh, home hub app same thing with the memos so for memos if you want to keep yourself a memo here this has a few more choices so the memo here uh, you have a bunch of stuff where you can just write it okay so if I just want to uh, write you know whatever it is dry cleaning right I can just write it on the screen and then save and now I have a new memo for dry cleaning all right or if I want to I can actually record a memo and when I record it it'll actually put a play button on the home screen for somebody to actually play back the recording so if the message you're trying to leave is too long then you can actually make a recording of it so if I tap to start the recording don't forget to pick up my dry cleaning so it says it's saved you can see there's a little play button now here on this memo I'm saving the memo so there's a memo right here and there's a play button right on it right and if I hit that don't forget to pick up my dry cleaning and it'll actually play the recording for you okay so you can actually leave recorded messages for people at the same time too the other thing is um, 
like I said, you can leave it for different people. You can use the keyboard, same thing. You can use the uh, microphone to record. You can use the um, pad to write, and it'll translate it up there. Okay? So this is a translate. So if I do it this way, right, if I just type in dry, right, it actually takes it and puts it in and types it out for me. Okay? <clears throat> That's different than using this, which is where you're actually writing it and it stays that way the way you wrote it. You can also do emojis, you can do pictures, you can change the color of your notes. So it has all those different choices. Okay, now that's if you want to go into all these different things, but you can actually use the voice assistant that is called Bixby, which is built into the system and do the same thing. So the icon for Bixby is down here if you want to start the voice control or there's just a command just like with uh, Google Assistant or Alexa where you can... So if I just wanted to find out some more information about the weather, I could just say, Hi Bixby, what's the weather? It is sunny and 41 degrees right now. So it'll give me a much more detailed thing of the weather for today, hour by hour. Uh, just like if you went to the weather channel, okay? And so you have all these choices, is it raining, any snow, and you can ask all these different questions, you know, whatever you're trying to do, okay? So when you're in the Explore Bixby choice, it'll show you for all the different things, like some of the things you can ask. So, for instance, if you want to calculate something, if you want to do um, a calendar entry, um, you can go to the internet, um, you can um, do a timer. So if I say, hi Bixby, set a, set a timer for one minute. Starting the timer for one minute. So now it's going to set its timer and then you're ready to go. Okay. So if you have a uh, cooking something or whatever you want to set a quick timer, you can do that. And you don't have to actually touch anything. So I find that uh, it pretty much can do everything that you need to do in the kitchen. Um, and so you can either use the input by touching it, you can use all the different choices within those in different areas, or you can use just the Bixby commands itself. So it's really versatile, but obviously using the Bixby commands is fastest, easiest, and you don't have to touch anything. Okay. Um, obviously, you can put your own background here. So I have my own background in here. This is a background of a sunset in Key West uh, when I was on vacation down there. But you have your background that you can put whatever you choose. You can arrange your stuff. Um, so on my main homepage, I have those things. On my second page, there's the whiteboard. So on the whiteboard, you can put photos and notes and all kinds of stuff on that thing. This is the fridge manager. So what this is I'm going to tell you here is the current temperatures you have set for the different parts of the refrigerator. So the main fridge is 35, the freezer is 5 degrees because I like it a little above zero so the ice cream's not rock hard. And then this is that flex zone in the middle here. So when you pick that you're going to have these four choices to choose from as far as the temperature. And so this is going to differ from the main fridge temperature. So say you're storing wine in there or whatever, you can have it a little warmer as opposed to uh, meat which would be colder. So 33 for the yogurt that I'm storing in there is perfect and it keeps it nice and solid and nice and chilled so it's it's awesome. Um, at the top it'll tell you if your water filter it needs to be replaced it'll tell you the status of the ice maker so the ice is full right now it tells you the outside uh, temperature and, and uh, humidity and then um, under the fridge settings you can have these different types of things like if you want to turn on off the ice maker lock the dispenser the door alarm comes on so that's if you leave the door open and you didn't close it all the way a little alarm will come on a little dinging will start um, and then you can have all of these like if you want to uh, turn the cooling off or something like that that's usually for uh, store displays but so I have those different things. They also have the power freeze and power cool. So if, if you need, are loading a whole bunch of like warm groceries inside the refrigerator, you can turn on power freeze and, and things like that. So 
there's a help on every screen pretty much where you can get any information that you need. So that's the fridge manager. There's also the view inside uh, widget here which is kind of neat. So when you go inside this widget, what it does is it shows you the inside shelves of the refrigerator and what's in there. And what you can do on these is actually tag things for expiration dates. So, if, you know, for instance, if I had something, you can see it says broccoli two days left, right? So when you put food in the refrigerator, you can tag them if you want to for um, how long it should be in there before you should start, um, you know, finishing it off so that it doesn't expire, okay? And you can do all kinds of different things there. So if I had, if I go back to the um, view here, inside the fridge, right, here's like uh, some cream cheese icing, right, and if I just hold my finger on there, it'll surround it and then I can do a couple things with it. I can add a memo to it, I can add it to my shopping list if I'm running low, or I can do the food list. And if I do the food list, it brings up a screen where I can type in what it is, right, and or I could say it on the microphone, whichever one you want to do, or you could write it out with your finger. <clears throat> and then what you can say, where is it, and what part of the fridge is it in, and then you can set a reminder for it if you want to, that it's going to expire in so many days, right? So you can you can take that, you know, those dates or whatever like that, and change them to whatever you want to, and say, okay, it's going to expire in, you know, whatever two days. Okay, and then it'll keep track of it, and then it'll show up on your main screen <coughs> that that's going to expire. You can see down here in two days, and so. If you need to make sure that you eat some eat something before it expires, you'll know, or you'll know its expiration date if it's in there too long. Okay, and so that's what this does, and so it keeps track of all these foods here that you have in here, right? And then you can also add it directly here. Carrots. So there's the carrots there, right? And so you can do it through the voice command or you can do it through the manual entry. You can also remove an item if you want to. So anything that's left in here that's not there anymore, you finished it off, you can just say there and delete, delete it, and it will take it off the list. So this is a cool little widget and this is again on your phone. So it syncs everything up so you can like see what's expiring if you need to get something or whatever it may be. At the bottom of this second screen, you have all the icons to get into the different parts of the system. So like this takes you right out to the internet. This is just a browser, so you, whatever you want here, it'll take you out to. So last place I was at was Home Depot, right? You can save it as your home page. You can save it as a favorite. Um, so it has all those different choices. It has the standard stuff at the bottom for back button and all that kind of stuff, and like any other browser. Okay. So this is adding it to the home screen. So if I wanted this link on my actual home screen, I could just hit that and hit done. It's now on the home screen. So if I go back to the home screen, at the bottom here, see there's a link to the Home Depot. So if I want a link to a certain website for whatever reason, I can just do that. And then when you hit that link, it just brings up the browser and actually shows you the, the web page. You can do a search up here on any web page. Um, there's a plus sign here where you can. Um, this is the, the last six here that I was at here, so it'll show me all those different things. I can clear them off the list if I want to. This would be my bookmarks if I had bookmarks. So you have all the different choices at the bottom of the browser, just like any normal browser. You know, there's a search. And again, you have different ways you can put it in. Voice, typing, it, writing it, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, Samsung Care, <coughs> that's just uh, access to the um, tips and extras and everything else <coughs> to get out to Samsung. Tells you how to do different things on it. So you can get a morning brief here. 
so it'll kind of walk you through. Good morning, Dad. Here is your morning brief. It is currently 29 centigrade or 80. You have one of... So they show you how to do all these different types of things. <clears throat> Uh, the smart view, this is if you want to actually connect your fridge to like your Samsung television or hub and then you can actually play content from that directly on here. Explore Bixby is good to go into and then you can see on any of your apps that you have on your fridge how do I use that with Bixby so I can just tell it what to do instead of talking to it. All right, so you have all these different types of things on here, whatever it may be. All right. So if you wanted to know how to add a memo, here's some suggestions on things you can say to do that. Okay. Um, the settings menu, these are all kind of standard settings for the whole system. So your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connections, uh, the display so you can change the brightness if you want the motion detector on so as you walk up to the uh, the fridge it'll detect your motion so it'll come alive screensaver on and off the theme of your screensaver um, when it starts the duration all that kind of stuff so pretty standard as far as that goes um, the apps or these are all the apps that are available that you can uh, load on to your screens and then down here there's some more available as you can uh, load into the refrigerator itself so you can pick any of those apps under the settings you have all these different apps and you can you know add or remove them um, they they have like all kinds of apps for music like Amazon music uh, Pandora Spotify so all those are on here so if you want to play them through your your fridge while you're in the kitchen you can um, it does have a link right to your shopping list there's the view inside to see all inside the the fridge with the cameras right so if you want to see what's inside the fridge without opening the door um, that's more for me that would be really for if you're not home but um, now this is kind of cool there's a deal things here so if you want if you're going to you know get some say cereal and you want to find the cheapest price for it you can look at your weekly deal so if I go down to like breakfast and cereal right here it'll actually pull up all the weekly deals from all the different uh, food stores that you have selected on your system so you can go to your store settings and select the stores that are near you and then it'll show you kind of all the different food deals and where's the best you know price for something that you're trying to get so that's kind of cool and they also have a coupons thing on the left here too so if I needed some um, I don't know looking for uh, some kind of a deal on uh, yogurt or something like that whatever I'm looking for I can see if there's any deals out here currently on any of that kind of stuff uh, it does have a timer which again you can just use your voice control but you can set timers if you want to uh, time things. The gallery is the photo gallery so if you load your photos into the system then you can do a photo gallery. You can also just play a slideshow so if you wanted to just see kind of all the places you've been and all your photos they'll just do a slideshow on the TV. Um, I haven't found how to do this and set this as the screensaver yet but um, I'm not sure if that's possible but I'm still playing around with it so Okay, and then, um, you know, so on some of the other pages here, these widgets here, you can see I have Amazon Music right here. So, again, this is linked to your Amazon account, so anything you have in your music, uh, you could, you know, here's, I was playing Michael Buble, so it'll start Birds playing. flying high, you know how I feel. And it sounds pretty good. Sun in the sky. And you can change the volume. You know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by. You know how I feel. 
and you can go, it'll have your music lists on it, your playlists, tracks, whatever you had uh, on your system, then you can, um, you know, find it on here, just like you would on your app, on your phone for Amazon Music, and play it on the system. So I have Amazon Music, so that's why I have it on here, but you have these little widgets, it kind of remembers the last thing it saw, and it'll, it'll play that again. Yeah, and you can have these things on the, um, uh, what they call the uh, family board too, which is a first board. That if you want it on the system, you can have it and it'll keep those things on to quickly get to them. But you can move this anywhere. And these are all movable, so if I, let me go back here, if I hold my finger on the widget, I can move it around, and I can move it from screen to screen too, from this screen to the other screen or whatever. As long as you have the real estate open on the previous screen, it'll let you do it. Uh, this this is a Smart Things widget here. What this this is my anything that's connected to my Samsung Smart Things hub would be on here. So these are all like the water sensors throughout the house. So you know you can see all the sensors and their current status and you know all that kind of stuff. So it'll just show you all that information, so you know what it is. So just another another portion of the uh, connectivity with uh, Samsung Smart Hub. Okay, those are the gallery I just did before. So again, if you don't want something, you just hold your finger on it, you hit delete, it takes it. If I don't want this screen right here, I just hold my finger, delete, delete. Now, when I go back, I only have three dots at the top, so just three screens, and that's it. Okay. Now, there isn't uh, another screen. Let me hold this down here. There's another screen. Get over this one here. in the beginning here uh, that you can have also you can turn it on and off with this little thing at the top here so this is sort of a uh, sort of the family page right here we can put all kinds of stuff on here not just the widgets and they will show up on this screen right here um, I don't use it so I basically just turned it off which you can turn it off at the top here alright so this is my main screen I come down in the morning Everything for the day is right here. Calendar, what I'm doing, do I need to do anything, do I have any memos, all this stuff is right here. And everything else is sort of extra on top of that. Um, at the bottom here, the standard navigation is, this is to get Bixby to talk to you if you want to manually do it instead of saying the command. This here shows you the last things that we're doing on the system. So you see I was in Amazon Music, I was in the gallery, I viewed the refrigerator. So it shows you all your kind of last stuff that you've done that you can jump to if you want to. And then if you're done with these things, you can also just hit the clear all at the bottom and it'll clear them all out. The one in the middle here is the home page. So that's your main home page. And then you have the back button if you want to go back. If you're on one of those screens, it takes that. And then the notification bell at the bottom. This would show me all notifications I had at the top here. And then it also has a couple settings for turning on and off the Wi-Fi, the mic, uh, the smart view, so if I click that, again that's where it connects to your Samsung TVs or whatever. And then the settings button, which takes you back to that main settings screen, it's just another way to get to it. You can also hide this menu at the bottom here. So if you don't want to see all these buttons on some of the screens, you can hide them. There'll be a little arrow right next to it right there. And let's see, I think that's, for the most part, that's it. Now there is one thing that's kind of cool, like in the fridge itself, underneath this little compartment here, is where the USB port is so that you can load photos. And also there's an on and off switch right here. So why that's important is in case the uh, hub, you know, say it needs to be reset because, I don't know, it froze or some weird thing happened, you know how electronics are you can actually just turn it off and then turn it back on with that switch and that's convenient obviously because the plug for the refrigerator is in the back of the refrigerator you'd have to pull it out and that would be kind of a pain so they thought of that too and they have that switch up in that little compartment so that you can reset the hub if you needed to um, the other thing is let's see if I go under sound for settings you can see there's actually different sounds for the media the system and they have actually have an equalizer where you can pick uh, like five different equalizer settings um, for you know if you if you do music mostly 
or speech or whatever it is. So they do have some uh, different settings and you can also have the sound when you touch it if you want to hear the little uh, clicks and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it it's pretty versatile. You can see it's very quick and responsive. I'm sorry the video is so bad on it. It's hard to photograph uh, LCD screen, especially one that's vertical like this when my camera doesn't uh, go that way really. Um, and this up here at the top here will show you your Wi-Fi signal, Bluetooth, okay, activity. And so you pretty much have everything you want right on this main screen here. And it's super convenient and I really do like it and everything is now organized in one single location. So every day when I come I, I can just see everything that's going on. So um, that is pretty much for the uh, smart home hub that's in integrated into the refrigerator. Um, and I think that's it for the most part for this new uh, refrigerator. I will say that the smart home hub is not a gimmick so it's really nice and you will use it and it's gonna keep you sort of organized and the fact that it syncs with all your devices is just a big plus. But the refrigerator itself for the actual functions of a refrigerator work fantastic. Uh, okay I was kinda done with my video and then I keep finding more things as I'm digging into this home hub even more so I thought I'd quick show you a couple extra little things. So first of all, they have this feature called uh, Morning Brief, which gives you basically a couple of things right off the bat when you come down in the morning. And you can just say, Hi Bixby, start Morning Brief. Good evening, Sean. Here is your evening brief. It is currently 3 centigrade or 39 Fahrenheit, clear in Wilmington. Humidity is at 34%. You don't have any event on your calendar today. Good news. You don't have any food item expiring in the next three days. Next is today's news headlines. Live from NPR News in Washington. So you can see it actually gives you your... Uh, daily brief just by coming up in the morning so that's kinda nice and you can go into the if you wanna go into it um, when you pull it up you can actually um, deselect anything you don't want so if you didn't want the food reminder you could do an edit on it remove that so they give you these four choices you don't have many anything besides that but you get these four choices the order that you want them to happen in and all you have to do is either say that or you can hit the um, app at the bottom here um, and then just hit the start on it one of the two so that's something interesting so you get a while you're making your coffee you're doing whatever you're doing you can get a morning brief of everything the news uh, is about a briefing of the news about four minutes so that's pretty cool the other thing I found out is you can add uh, the apps to the home screen directly so um, when you go over to your apps First of all, this whole section that has these apps by default down here, you can also change this. You can remove ones you don't want, add ones onto this screen, whatever you want to do. So if you want to clean this up, you can, and then just have the ones that you want. And you don't have to have the widget. You, instead of the widget, you can just have the button for the app, depending what you want to do. So for example, um, if I go into the apps here, these are all the apps. And so here's the meal planner app that I deleted. If I want this back on, I can just hold it down and I have a choice to add to the home screen and see it's at the bottom of the home screen now. Now if I want to move it to their screen, you just hold it and drag it across and I can drag it over to this screen or, or the other screen depending where I want it to be. And then it's on there. So you can rearrange these, you can get rid of them, I just hold it down, hit delete and it'll take it off. It's always going to be in the app, so you're not deleting it from the system. You're just deleting it from your screens or moving it around. Some of them also have widgets. So if I go back to my home screen, as you know, when you hold down your finger, you can pick your widgets, and then you have your list of your widgets. But not all the widgets are here. So for instance, there's no widget on here right now. Um, and for 
I think it was, I can't remember which one I was looking at, but if you hold down the button, it'll tell you if there's widgets available and if you want to add a widget to whatever screen you're on, or you can just add it to the home screen. So the apps themselves, I found out, you can actually add and move around um, on the screens themselves. So on your main screen, if you have a couple of them that use all the time, like here's the timer, then um, you can do that and then it'll uh, keep those wherever you have real estate on the screen. So you don't have to worry about uh, having things on here that you don't want to see that you're never going to use. You can just get rid of them. So for instance, if you know the Amazon widget or the uh, trivia widget, right? If I didn't want those in there, I could easily just keep them down here and then I could take my Amazon Music one, right? And I could drag it over to the uh, home screen and put it right there. So anytime I want to play Amazon Music, I can just hit it right off the home screen. I don't have to like flip between actual screens themselves. So that was kind of cool. That was a little feature I found. One of the other features I found as I was playing with it was the timer. So I showed you that before, but let me just show you what happens when it actually reaches the end of its time. So, hi Bixby. Set a timer for 10 seconds. Starting the timer for 10 seconds. So when it gets to zero, this is what it does. So it plays a little tune so that you kind of, it's something you can't really miss because when you hear it, you'll know that's the end of the timer that you just set. So that was kind of cool, something um, I didn't realize before because I never let it actually go down to the zero on the timer when I was kind of testing it out. One of the other things you can do is you can mirror, if you have an Android phone, um, I don't, but if you did, and using uh, Chromecast, you can actually mirror your phone on the hub also. So that's another thing, and then you can use anything on your phone. Um, so that was another little thing. And then, um, besides the TV mirroring and the phone mirroring, uh, you can actually um, make phone calls uh, through the hub too. So there's video chat that you can do. Um, oh, this, this actually is video chat with a Samsung uh, support professional. So you can actually connect through video chat if you're having a problem with your... Um, your fridge. They also have this thing where you can set up an automatic water filter uh, supply so every six months they'll send you a new one type of thing so they got a couple of things on there. One other thing you can do is you can hook up your phone through Bluetooth and so if it's just laying on the counter and you want to make a call to somebody in your contacts list you can actually do that through the refrigerator also. So you just tell Bixby to make the call and then it will, you know, whoever you're going to call, whatever your contact is, and then it'll dial that number, and then you'll be speaking basically through the refrigerator. You'll hear it from the speaker, and you'll um, be uh, talking through the mic, and then uh, when you're finished, you can just hang up. So as simple as that. You can turn the volume up and down. You can mute. Um, so you can make a call through your refrigerator to anybody that you need that's on your contact list in your phone because it'll connect through Bluetooth to your phone. So all you have to do is get that Bluetooth connection set up and you're all ready to go. So just uh, another neat feature I found. So if you go to the help under the family hub, they have all these different sections and you can scroll through the different uh, things that they have under each one of those sections. Just make sure you scroll down because at first I thought it only had a couple but then I realized you could scroll down. They got this glimpse family map here where you can track the location of all your uh, family members through their phones of where they are. Um, talks about all the different music services, the internet on the entertainment portion, miscellaneous, voice command examples, troubleshooting. So like if I went to voice command examples, Here's like for the different apps, all the different kind of voice commands that you can use um, to tell it to do something. So if you just scroll through these, you can kind of get an idea of the things you, you would say to do different things like calendars, to-dos, morning briefs. You can see actually it has like things like you can pause it, you can skip ahead. Um, so it's kind of kind of cool. Like if you miss, you miss something, you can say rewind or repeat. 
so they got a, like a bunch of stuff and of course if you have the um, ring doorbell system also you'll be able to uh, see ring on your refrigerator here if somebody's at your front door so um, all kinds of voice command examples under that too so I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you next time